Talk here. We're joined by uh, Callum, better known as St. Raymond. Thanks Thank for having me. Thanks for joining us. Um, we're going to discuss a few things, um, how you got into supporting Knots, and then we'll go on to more current affairs later on. Um, yeah, that'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah. What's the date? 15th? Fift- yeah. yeah. 15th. Yeah. Yeah. Still nothing. Yeah. It's hard I right think right. I saw, st- I think the day that, that the season starts in about seven weeks, six weeks. No, no team. Yeah. <laughs> no anything. No anything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To start off though, how did you get into sporting knots? Just a family thing, really. I kind of, I literally was going as a baby, like being taken down yeah. at a very young age. Yeah. And I've got, I think my first earliest memory of sporting knots was the Great Escape in, was it oh one oh two? That's my first memory playing Huddersfield at home. That's my earliest memory I can remember of being at knots. Mm. And then kind of just. Yeah, unfortunately, fell in love with the club, and it's quite interesting because my my brothers are um, quite older, and also my dad, and it's it's um, they've they've seen a lot of promotions over the years, a lot of success trips to Wembley, and I think in my lifetime, sporting knots, the only promotion I've had was the Monto year ten years ago. So it's quite um, yeah, I haven't had the best luck with knots, I don't think. That's yeah. what I like about knots, though. Everyone seems to be a family thing. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, it's not like some other teams where you just support them for a bit of success exactly and I think especially if you're born in Nottingham now and you don't really have an alliance to someone I think it's very easy for that person to support Forest because uh, to be quite frank why would you support why would you support not so I think it has to be a family thing especially at the minute Um, yeah so uh, yeah, I think it's going to be even harder now to attract new fans but I think it's got to start from somewhere I think yeah. yeah, it's gonna have to be family that's passing yeah, on support. Exactly. Well, you never know a good season. Definitely not next yeah, season. Yeah, you never know. I think yeah, it, it's crazy what a promotion season can do, and especially I think it's it's a weird it's a weird thing with Forest because I think there's kind of more of a hatred from our side, and we're just like the annoying little brother to them. Yeah. So they, there is there is a lot of fans who kind of will go and watch both. So it is interesting, like when you're doing well. I say you're doing well, but last year we had great crowds. We had I think the third highest average, yeah. and we were rubbish so yeah, I'm sure yeah. we'll have the highest next season yeah you'd, you'd sure. like to think so well it depends what happens if we're still a football club by 3rd of oh. August yeah <laughs> yeah that's that's the worrying point isn't it <laughs> what about your first game mate do you remember your first game you said you were going what's the first game you remember going I to? think f- I can't actually remember a first game I actually attended but I think yeah Huddersfield is my earliest memory of being not fan so I'd have been 6 uh, and we stayed up I think it was last game of the season, um, so that's my earliest memory of attending knots. But yeah, it's not been um, there's not been too many good memories to be fair. So. I think mine was was it is either League Cup or the FA Cup against Middlesbrough at home years ago. Yeah, I didn't I remember that game. We scored within like a few yeah, minutes. T- t- Tony, Tony Scully with a cross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember being sat um, in the paper. It's like could just see the cross going. In. It was brilliant. Yeah, I remember that game very well. Actually. So good, very yeah. well. I remember that game as well. So. Did, didn't we beat him as well? No, I think they came back. Yeah, they, I I think think they came uh, back too. Did uh, Janino score maybe? Maybe. I'm put it on the line there. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to put it on the line. I just remember Tony Scully because I was going mad in the family yeah, stand. Yeah, dead early. I was in the family stand for that game actually. <laughs> I didn't really know too much. Like I was going with my dad, but I didn't know too much about football then. Yeah. And he's trying to tell me, oh, this is a massive game because they were probably prem then. Yeah, we got that was. I remember that was like rammed. That game was. Yeah. It was. I think it got sold as like thirteen thousand, but. There was not a spare seat in the house that day. No, that was. But I remember, yeah, it was. I just remember that game being chocker. Yeah, I, I remember struggling to get parked at that game. Was that? Yeah, not that I was driving. <laughs> <laughs> um, so your first kit? Can you remember what your first kit was? It might have been that season's home kit. Oh really? Yeah. What year is that? Is it ninety? I think it's ninety six. Was it? I think. I'm not. Sh- I'm just trying to remember now. And I, I, what was the? There was. Oh, that's a good question actually it was hard I think as well having older brothers I think there's a lot of kits just in the house anyway yeah there's like um, yeah there's, they've got all sorts locked away um, it's quite good as well there's a guy I know who he, his basic job is he sells merch but he's a massive football fan he like doesn't really support anyone but he just loves football so whenever he's in a city he'll go to the and I saw him about a year ago and he was like got all these ages ago and it was just all old knots kits yeah. but match worn kits yeah but oh, it, was, nice. it was yeah it was but it was quite funny like on the back of it was like i think bolland was on one of them there's like a yellow kit but yeah there is <laughs> there's a few knocking around but i can't remember what, what my first very first one was actually that must be odd not sporting the team though don't you think yeah you must be good at the same time just <laughs> yeah football. yeah and um 
yeah, it must be weird. I can't imagine not having. Just you'll never feel know. that true passion. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And I think once, like, especially when you, for all the lows, but especially in the highs, I'd I'd hate not to feel a part of it. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's just a, it's a weird one as well because I, I was thinking the other day we were talking about when we played um, MK Dons. It, it must be weird for that club. I just don't get how you could just, and just switch up. Like, who did they support before? That's all we were there. saying that. We, yeah, were, we were actually looking yeah, we were talking thinking about there's a fair few of MK Dons fans here. And I'm thinking, who? I just. Because I doubt they support Wimbledon because that would just be enough, like a Judas thing to do, but. Yeah, it's a weird one. I just I yeah, can't yeah. imagine just all of a sudden you can't quite put your finger on young kids. I understand like it. growing up there. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Their first but it's like o- older people. And I just I just yeah, I wonder what they were doing twenty years ago. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's odd. Well, we were talking when we put our first podcast out uh, last week, and we were talking about the new kit this season, if we're even gonna have one. <laughs> but what what would like as a new kit? And we just want the plain kit, don't we? Something yeah, simple with like you know the old badge. It's just a magpie. Yeah. That would be class for a kit. Yeah, I, I love the old, the best kit I've ever had was the Adidas. Oh, yeah. With yeah, the Adidas, yeah. like, originals? Yeah, with the, just the old, old school yeah, magpie. The old, yeah, that's that right. was class kit. Yeah. I don't think, well, I, I don't even know. I, yeah. <laughs> it might be playing in last season's. It wouldn't surprise me if we have to, yeah. The, it would not surprise me if we have to dig out some old kits or yeah, training we, kits. Yeah, or, literally. It, w- it would sum up the state of affairs, I think. Great yeah. right in the club shop 10 minutes before kickoff to <laughs> whoever it is on the first day. Uh, honestly, I wouldn't put it past it. I wouldn't put it past it. So Still printing the t shirts off. Mm. Kickoff. Yeah, <laughs> oh, no, honestly, it would not surprise me one bit. So, um, like in your lifetime, then, so obviously, you said you were sporting for a really young age. Who would you say in no order your top three Knots players are ever? Lee Hu is the best player I've ever seen play for Knots ever. Um, obviously, he's a, very, he's a very controversial man, but football ability wise, I don't think. And even talking to like my brother who've seen some greats over the years, even if like he'd just have the ability to change a game out. He'd be silent and he'd win a game in the 80th minute for you, and you'd be like, couldn't take a penalty though. One of the worst penalty takers I've ever seen. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's a very good question. I think Hughes. Yeah, for people our age, you've you've got that, that season. We had a few players, didn't we? Yeah, like Al- Alan George. Oh, he's class. He's a good player. Ben um, Davis. Davis. Trying to think who else I'd put up there. Stallard? Yeah, Stallard. Good old Stallard. Um, who would I put in my top three? I'm trying to think who we've had over the years. So you definitely go with Hughes? Hughes, Hughes, Hughes. best player I've seen play for now. So we said Sh- Sh- Casper was good. Um, very good, to be fair. I was at, did you go to the game at uh, Morecambe Away? Sol Campbell, one and only game. I no, I didn't see that actually. Yeah. Well, Smichael went up for a last minute corner and nearly scored an overhead kick from the edge of the box. <sighs> there's, there's footage of it somewhere. The original video got taken down, but there's footage of it. And then, the thing is with Smichael as well, a penalty would get taken and it wouldn't be like a penalty because I thought he was going to save this. Yeah, I think yeah, he yeah. saved about four penalties that year. Yeah. Um, but that team was just. What I used to love about Schmeichel, he used to come out and he'd be like his dad, massive, make yeah. himself Presence, massive. Yeah, yeah. And I bet strikers in that league that aren't as composed as top division strikers, they'll be, they'll be put off by that. Definitely, massively, yeah. He's class. Definitely. Massively, yeah. Um, I'm, trying to think. No, so I'm just trying to go through the players now. It's a good question. Richard Duffy. <laughs> yeah, good old Duffs. <laughs> <laughs> You're joking. If Aiden, anyone has him in the top, three. Aiden Ollis. Uh, no, no chance. Um, that's the thing. That's I think that's the hard thing for us as Knots fans. We, like I say, that one year is the only promotion mm. I've seen in my lifetime. In our lifetime, yeah. yeah. So it's like it's really, it's just thinking of players that've gone on to do better things. And there's, I think, you know, I've had a few youngsters that have gone elsewhere, but Steve Finnan, Steve Finnan, and you know, I think in my in the last even ten years, I can't think of anyone other than Davis really, apart from Judge, but that's gone on to play higher level actually. But yeah, without a doubt, Lee Hughes is the best. I liked Heffernan. Heffernan, yeah, we were good that year. We st- like um, Danny Olsop. Mm, great. Yeah. We, we, we had some great players over the years, but I just think we just seem a bit cursed as a club. Um, there just always seems to be a bit of a problem. But I think there's one game Lee Hughes stands out for me. I think Wigan at home in the FA Cup. I watched the highlights yeah. a few days ago. He ran them ragged. It was honestly, I think their centre half got bought off at. Um, Got bought off at half time because he was that bad. Um, yeah, I can't remember his name, but yeah, he bought him off at half time. Yeah. So I think, um, yeah, that game in particular was probably the 
stand out one for me. I don't I don't think we'll see a better striker at Knox ever again. Probably not. I'm just trying to think of goalkeepers because I've obviously got. Oh, uh, good. Is that what you say his name? Who? Belkowski. Yeah, yeah Belkowski was good. He went on to play. He's a, he, to be fair, he's another one that's gone on to. He went to the championship level. last season. Yeah, he played championship. Yeah, have you seen the highlight like, reel of him? At Ipswich. Yeah, 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 he's yeah. Unreal. It's unbelievable. Yeah, he's, yeah and he's, he's, gone to, he's gone on to play international football off the back of it. So, fair play to him. But yeah, I just think, like I say, there's not been um, that many that you can really say have stood out. Um, We've had a few top keepers, I think. I remember we had a keeper called uh, Nelson. Do you remember him? Stuart yeah, Nelson. Nelson. I thought well, he was yeah. class. He was a great keeper. So anyone else you can think of that you put in your top three? I think, um, like I say, I think we've just been, um, we haven't been blessed with, uh, like over the years there's probably players that like, each season I thought, oh, he's a really good footballer. And, like Stefan Oaks and like those kind of players growing up I loved because they were just, they had a bit of something, but looking back, I don't think we are, they're actually great. I think mm. we've, um, like I say, I think that's why that season, the Monto season, was so special. I think because we had players really we shouldn't have had yeah. playing at that level um, for us. So you know, like Hughes, Ben Davis, and um, yeah, I think we were blessed with good footballers that year. Definitely. So yeah. I think that that team just stands out for me really. Mm. Um, but it's quite interesting that year because there's a lot of players that kind of you forget played for us that year you know like Matt Hamshaw and Delroy Facey was Westcott that year Westcott I re- see Westcott for me I, I best crosser of the ball I've seen at Knox he's a dead nice guy and we saw him taking his kids just yeah, to play yeah. football on the field yeah I think he's still chatting to him. I think he still plays somewhere local mm. he was um, he, yeah he was turning out for someone locally but yeah it's just I think it says a lot that I can't think of three yeah, st- three star definite. players yeah I think I'd go do you know last season I know he was only a lonely, but Stubbs. You had yeah. to say he was 19. He was unreal. Yeah, yeah, good, very good. 19, 20. Yeah. yeah. If, if we could keep him for a couple of seasons. I know. Yeah. Missing a few out, aren't we? Yeah. Grealish. Grealish, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I suppose that year, to be fair, that year, when we stayed up. Yeah, it was because of him. Yeah, well, and, and a lot and of it was on him. That strike force of Spencer and Murray was one of the best front two I've. Bar Hughes and whoever his partner in Rogers, well, whatever. Rogers, that front two was probably one of the best I've seen, Spencer and Murray, because it's perfect for that level. No, like spent. I, I know Jimmy well, and he's, he's the best first touch of the ball I've probably seen at not unbelievable. Yeah. Him and Murray, and if they both probably stayed injury free, I think would have gone on to do well because that's what you want at that level—a big man and someone with pace next to him. And it, yeah, it worked for that back in the season. And uh, Josh Vea, Bella was way too good for that level. McGregor um, was decent. McGregor, yeah, it was kind of weird though with McGregor, wasn't it? Because he was really good the first half of the season, and then during the running, he didn't really get a. Sniff, but no. he was a very good player, and he's well, he's gone through very well. But I think we've, like I say, we've had a, probably a few good loanies, but yeah, that that team was pretty good. Grealish, and yeah, it's no surprise to see Grealish doing so well now. What was he when he came to 17, 18? Yeah. 17, yeah. 17, yeah. yeah. I think if I was to do my three, I'd go Davis, Schmeichel, uh, Grealish as yeah. favourite three, not best three, but favourite, favourite yeah, yeah. Schmeichel was amazing to be fair yeah Schmeichel would be in there for me 100% if you knew what he was going to go on to do to yeah, have Schmeichel yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, he's won the yeah, Premier yeah, League yeah, yeah. smash it as well for Leicester as well yeah that's that's unreal yeah, yeah. he's very very good yeah I, put, I think he'd be in my top three actually now looking back on it him and Hughes definitely I think yeah so um, did you go to many games then? yeah as many games? as I can really um, home and away if I'm around I'll go to as many as possible Um did you get to many this season? Yeah, got to quite, unfortunately, quite a few this season. <laughs> yeah. um, obviously, I was there for Swindon. And um, I was just saying before we started, I went to the um, Cheltenham game away. And uh, a couple of mates were going on like an all day. They were drinking. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I can be asked to go to Cheltenham on a day session or whatever. So I was like, I might drive up later. So it got to about one o'clock. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to go for it. So I spent two hours in the car. I literally got there, f- I think, five to three running the ground and I think I left at 50 minutes really? so I did four hours of driving to see 50 minutes football yeah I think I think we were three no, three. I can't remember the game ended four or three whatever it was I was like you know what I cannot be bothered one bit so I, yeah I just went so <laughs> I think that sums up the season really um, I just yeah I'm not I think people some people have different view on it like stay to the end support the team but sometimes it's it's heartbreaking isn't it? and I, yeah and I don't think that team deserved any credit really um, 
you know, I think it's a bit unfortunate because I think there are there's a few good players. There's a few good players in there, and and that's what's annoying, really annoying, because obviously something's not right in that camp because you know I don't think I've, I'm not a fan of what Ardley's done tactic tactically in the back end of the season, but I don't think he's necessarily the worst manager in the world. I honestly think that this. It got to the stage where anyone could have come in and nothing would have changed because yeah. it, it was just rotten. And yeah. you know, I like, for example, Hemmings. He gets a lot of stick, but I think the guy's a good footballer. I think he scored 15 goals. Yeah, and it, that kind of slips under the radar a bit. People's like, lazy. I'm like, score 15 goals in a side that finishes second bottoms, not an easy thing to do. And it, you know, it's plays like Enzio. Like, he really frustrates me because I know in, in there there's a good footballer. Yeah. There is a good. And I think that's why going into next season, we might. It's not like we've got to completely rebuild the squad. If everyone stays who's there at the minute, you've got front two, you've yeah. got a wide man, you've got you know. It's not like there's no one there, and that's what gives me a little bit of hope that we won't go down again. I think is there yeah. is actually there's a couple of players there, but then if they go, yeah, we're screwed. But yeah, I think that was the annoying thing about last season. There was obviously there's obviously ability in there, but and, you know, it's just you look back at that. That three games where we played Lincoln, Forest Green, and Mansfield. And I thought it was dead. Enough. I thought, we, yeah, I thought it was dead set. I was telling people, yeah, we won't go down, no chance. You see the guy on uh, ITV that said he put loads of money on after those three games. Yeah, I, I had some money on after that game, and I actually looked at my settled bets for the season. I think it was one where we played away somewhere in about September time. I think it was under Kuehl. and um. I can't remember, we won away from home. Or no, we beat someone at home. And I was like, you know what? I fancy to go on a run here. And I had knots to go up. And it was 100 to 1 at the time. I thought, I'm having that. I'm having that. And, um, and then when we did those three games, I had knots to finish top half. It was like crazy odds. I was like, yeah, I'd have some of that. So yeah, it wasn't the best season. We'll be up on a Saturday, wouldn't we? And you'd be a bit like dubious about the game. And I'd say, like 10 games to go, I'd say, we're not going down. Five it games just, to go, I'm yeah. not going down. Half time at Swindon. It's, it's one of them because we've avoided it so many times. You just can't really comprehend it actually happening. Well, that was the thing, and it just got it got to the stage of the season where I'd, I actually started to just be like, I think this might be our time to go. I think as a club, we've been we we're almost a bit too above ourselves. I think I agree as a that. club, we think we're, yeah. we're something entitled. We're not. Entitled. We've got a big stadium. Yeah, we've got, you know, as a, we've done well in the past, but that means nothing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely nothing. Mm. And I think. I think it's unfortunate to say, but I think we deserved it really as a club. Like not as a fan base at all, but as a club, I think there's almost been an arrogance with Knots that we're well, we're too good for League Two, and the reality is, we're, we're not. not. We're not. Yeah, yeah at all. clearly not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Going back to the betting thing, though, you, you seem that we're favourites to go up. I know oh, that's crazy, and I've it seen is, people it? like people are starting to do like their. Um, who do you think is going to win each league? And I've seen so many people say Knots, and I'm like, do you know what's going on? Yeah, we've literally like. There's nothing there for us. We haven't got anywhere to train at the minute. Um, yeah. So I, I, I think honestly, like our best hopes for next year is just not going down again. And yeah. and it's sad that that's the case. But I really, you know, look at Chesterfield. They thought they went into last season with thinking they had a decent chance, and it wasn't until Sheridan came in that they were bottom four. And that's the reality of that league. So there was an amazing thread by. Um, a Hartlepool fan saying this is what you've got to look forward to Knox fans and it was just a list of things like you will get beaten by Barrow on Tuesday night 3-0 it was just it was, it was an amazing thread and it did quite tickle me it was like you will get beat by us because you have to go obviously qualify for the FA Cup oh, that's there's, gonna there's be like someone will beat you in the qualifying round that you've never heard of and it will just happen you have to admit it's going to happen and it's it's just depressing it is grim you know especially no disrespect but if you said to me that Monto season in 10 years time you're going to be playing Surely, in a in a league game, I'd have laughed. You'd think yeah. they'd have been taken over by a million. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. They'd be with us. Yeah. yeah, and you know, if you said even even a few years ago, are oh, you going to play Chorley? I'd go, yeah, FA Cup, obviously. Like we've got to play them twice next season. No disrespect to them, but that's what it's come to, and it's going to be a big shock, I think, for people. I think, um, you know, I think there's still, <laughs> I think once once slash if anything gets sorted, this takeover. I think there might be a bit of excitement amongst fans in terms of it's something completely new that we've not had and yeah. going to these places and literally playing on parks t- almost. Well, a little bit of positivity as well. Nothing yeah. gets released. Well, nothing's really been released, has it? Other yeah. than the, the court hearings, etc. And that's the thing. It's just 
every week there's something new at the minute. Yeah. Well, not even that, every other day there's something new at the minute. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think blame lies at, at the door of one man, and that's Alan Hardy for me. Yeah. Um, well, you, that's that's the one of the consortiums. Uh, is it the advisor or something? Alex May? He's yeah. He found out to be like fraudulent. It's not even called Alex May. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't remember what it, the name, his yeah, actual yeah. name is, but they put out a statement saying, oh, we're going to look into it. Yeah, but no, that, cut talks. yeah, that's what I'm saying. And that's what it's obviously come to where, yeah, if, if, if you're dealing with a convicted fraud, fraudster and it comes out that that's the case, you'd just be like, right, no. But the fact they said, oh, we're only going to speak to him as an advisor. <laughs> it's cause, sorry, we're going to speak to him because he was only advisor. Then it come out two days later Amazing. that he yeah. actually wants to be the owner. Yeah. It's like, it's almost become a bit laughable now. And <laughs> and it's getting to the point where you look at it and you think, you know what, I'd actually rather just have just anyone there. You know, you look, I look at this, any, in any other years, you look at a fraudster and go, right, no chance but it gets to the point where if he's going to take over the club just do it do you know what I mean just do it if he gets rid of Hardy just do it yeah. you know I think he, he is a big problem with the club over the past season I think that could be a part of what's going on in the camp and I think in, there was obviously the a lot George of Grant thing as well yeah. where he was slagging Forrest wasn't he on Twitter yeah, he, yeah and that's, he that's the reason that's well, the reason Yates, Yates went back as well yeah. because he came out and said no they said we can have him for the season that we've signed an agreement yeah. There was no agreement in place, and that's why he's he's cut a lot of ties, and and I think obviously he was interfering last in the summer. You know, I, I kind of get what he was saying in terms of wanted a younger squad. I get that, but to completely Take abolish experience. a squad that finished that for a lot of the season was in the top three, mm. and you know, what, I back end of the season the form cost us, but to completely abolish a side, and I think you know looking back last year I don't think they had any leaders in the camp you know like you can imagine Schola in that in that dressing room don't get me wrong I quite liked her I thought he was a decent footballer he was what he was did what he did yeah. but it's, I think he was more than that I think it's having that, someone like that in the changing room I, I don't think there was anyone in that changing room if you look at the starting 11 on the last game of the season maybe Michael Doyle and Jim O'Brien but I don't think there were will be necessarily but until they came in, there was no one. And then they came in, I thought, okay, we've actually got leaders now. And that just, Doyle sometimes looked like he couldn't be arsed. Yeah, like, he was just, he's, did, just, you see, did you see that interview of him? Uh, yeah, I, game I, was after. yeah, I publicly slagged him off that. After that. It was just the arrogance. When he was saying to, it was Charlie Slater, wasn't it? Yeah, saying, yeah. you don't know me. Yeah, yeah. It's like, the guy's just trying to ask you questions. And he's doing his job. And yeah. if there's someone like that in the changing room, that's yeah, what I mean. That's all, all this all negative kind of thing. It's all highlighted on Hardy, and I know he's he is like ninety nine percent the problem. But I reckon that check there was definitely things wrong in the changing room that were covered over because of how angry people were at Hardy. Like, yeah, and and you know I think obviously some something wasn't right last summer. Um, spent a lot of money, but I think I think what frustrated me last summer was there's a couple of things we didn't sign a centre midfielder that. Very well, David Bourne on paper come in. I thought, right, okay, but we didn't have someone that was like a, you know, we were blessed with Yates here before, but we didn't have a real. At that level, you need a nasty man in the midfield, mm. like a Doyle, well, like a Doyle, but not the Doyle. A Doyle that got. can be asked. Yeah, a yeah. Doyle that can be asked, and that's what you need at that level. We didn't have that. I think we just, I think he just, he was like a kid playing FIFA or football manager. He was just starting to sign the best attackers, mm. and it's like, yeah, that's great, but. You can't defend, yeah. and you're going to concede every time. It was it was in. plain as day, wasn't it? Like yeah. As soon as as soon as like say Hemmings was announced, you're, you're excited, but it's yeah. also like when you're going to yeah. sign a defender. And, and no, there was no backup. Like, like I was saying, that like, we got rid of, rightly so, we got rid of Nicky Hunt and D Dickinson, but we didn't bring any backups. So we got to the point where, see, I I, I quite like Alec Hewitt in centre midfield. Like, yeah, like, I he, he, yeah, he, like he does mix mix things, but I like it. I think he's a good enough footballer. He was good enough for his last year. But it gets to point where he's playing centre half three games into the season. He's thinking, you don't know what team he's putting out. It, yeah, and and look, Nolan did a great job. The second, should he shouldn't he? I don't know. You know, there's a lot of talk about why he did it. Blah blah blah. But then it was just the appointment of Kuhl for me was just a disaster for me, for me personally. And people have said he should have stayed, but I think I, I you know, the the only probably leader, so to speak, is is was John Stead whether oh, yeah. he's good on the pitch or not but when even players like him don't have fallen out with the manager you know something's not right so yeah. it was just that appointment for me was just 
bonkers. Um, so and, and and it just spiraled out of control from there, really. Yeah, Kiel wasn't getting on well at Crawley, really, was he? Like, he, he was like falling out with the fans and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, what's the feeling to that? Isn't yeah, it? It, 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 there's one reason he pointed at Kiel, and that's because of his name, and that's it. And he's yeah, obviously a Liverpool like, fan. Yeah, yeah, he's a yeah. Liverpool fan. Yeah, I was gonna say that. And that's 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 half been the problem with Hardy. It's all been about ego, ego, and press, and media, and you know. I remember there was a thing. Nolan was on. Um, what's the BBC program on a Saturday? Uh, on a Saturday morning, oh, football, so focus. football, focus. football, no, focus. yeah, yeah, yeah. Focus. and they did a thing on knots, and who's there at training for the cameras, Mr. Hardy? Yeah. It's like you don't need to be even that stupid press release this week with his stupid face on annoyed me because it's like you don't just put a club badge and say, even if it's it would actually been better if it said there. I know fans are straight, but there's no there's no update basically. Yeah. But the fact he tried to. Throwing some big words and make out it was just the guys. I'm thinking people are genuinely bored of it. Yeah, like I'm actually I, sick of it now. The, the statement he put out at the end of the season when it was like, I, t- I take full blame, and then the next paragraph he goes on to say, but, but I financially it back to the well, managers. He, just take the blame. Even when we went only. down, he was in the dugout doing interviews. The guy should have been nowhere near. And in that interview, he goes, he did on radio not you. He said, I take full blame. However. Yeah. players weren't fit and it's like yeah they, yeah, we know that but you can't come out and say I take all the blame and then start firing off who else yeah but he's you. saying the players weren't fit when he promised the training ground uh, Mike yeah. Edwards Troro said yeah. it yeah. Mike Edwards it, they've reported him like fitness coach yeah. and Troro literally tweeted something like um, it's clear to see how good Mike is it's evident Notts' fitness decreased when he left like look at Troro taking it, that's what it's got to the level where clubs like Troro are having his on <laughs> probably trying to have a dig to get a bit well, of fame, like, it's like, like you're well, saying that, yeah. well, that's why Baseford every time they're on a dig they're at in at Notts County yeah. just because that's where it's got to where <laughs> they can try and drag us in and get a bit of name and and I think the, the big problem last year was you know I wasn't a Q, uh, Q fan at all but when he's coming in you know and it's October time and he's saying look players aren't fit that's, that that is a worry. Yeah, that is, is a big worry. Because mm-hmm. you play in this level, you play Saturday, Tuesday, and if you can't <laughs> can't get through a Saturday game, yeah. So I don't know what happened last summer, but obviously I don't. I think fitness probably was a big issue. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, <coughs> any away games you've pinpointed for next season you're looking forward to? Because personally, I'm looking forward to obviously Chesterfield, also Wrexham. I fancy a trip to Wales. I've done Wrexham before. Yeah, Seen never lose one nil there. Grim, they have done Wrexham before. Um, well, you know what? It's like the, the, to be fair, it, there's a lot of London games next season, mm. um, but there's a, quite a few you can get to quite you. Harrogate, oh. yeah, Solly yeah. Halls, yeah. Yeah. Burnham, Burnham, you can get there in an hour. Yeah, yeah. Um, could go to Harrogate and see Stead score last minute, wouldn't it? Is he will score? Yeah, he will score, yeah, yeah. score against us. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a there's a few like local ones that will be. Like I said, I think it's just going to be a real eye, eye opener for Knox and a wake up call that it's actually happened. You know, when I remember watching the the um, National League playoffs this year, and um, I think it was filed, and they're literally their way, and it's just it's just a, a metal bar, and just a piece of grass behind it, and it's like people complaining about the Swindon away end, weren't they? Yeah, it's like that's what it's oh, going to be. To- that is weird. The toilets aren't great. Like no, but it's weird that you'd have a stadium. Like it's that, not, yeah. and then the away end's just got no. Well, I don't care about the away end. Yeah. The thing is, like, if they think Swindon away end's poor, oh yeah, that'd they're gonna. Oh yeah, it'd be like the toilet will be a brick wall next year. And that's, yeah, that's yeah, it's just a little hole in the wall. I'm looking forward to the Magpies derby against Chorley. I think they're the Magpies. Yeah, well. th- I think there's there's another one, isn't there? Um, Maidenhead. Maidenhead. Yeah, there's three Magpies. Can have three ma- or two Magpie derbies. Yeah. yeah. Should be interesting to make a big thing of that. That's what it's come to, <laughs> yeah. do you know what I mean? You've got to the make it interesting. Derby, made it. Yeah. Oh it's my great. god! That's what I mean. And the, the, the depressing thing is, these teams will be if if it stays as it is, these teams will turn it over. Mm. We'll go, we'll be playing Barrow at home, and they'll they'll beat us. And that's that's what it's come to. You know, at the point we're at now, as an estimation, when do you think the takeover happen, and what do you think could happen next season? Um, like as of now. Yeah, as of now. I honestly don't know the takeover because I don't believe a word Hardy says. Hardy yeah. can say it's happening tomorrow, and I'll. It, it's not. Um, I don't. I don't believe a word he says. I'd love it to happen soon because the problem we've got now is what it's fifteenth of June today, so the players are going to be back in training in the next couple of weeks. 
there's what 16 of them and it's getting to the point now where I'm getting jealous of of like players that are signing for Hol uh, Solly Hull and it's like that's what it's come to it's, teams are building sides already and getting the business done and, and, you know if we're not going to be taken over for another month it's going to get to the point where we're going to have to sign 10 players in about a week to get the, s the squad ready that so that ever works so I realistic um, I think if the takeover happened in the next two weeks might have a chance of playoffs but I'd, I'd honestly take the table at this level but if it if it drags on and it gets to the point where we're a couple of weeks away from the season and nothing's happened I honestly fear yeah, the worst I think we would go again yeah which would be hard mate. that would oh, be shocking look at Stockport they've only just come back up into the National League after years in the North and they're, they're a big club yeah. they're, they're a League 1 League 2 club and They've been in the north for what f about five years now, or maybe even longer. And um, yeah, so I fear that if nothing happens soon, it could be a, a real worrying season next season. I had a look, and I think there's five teams, including Knotts, that haven't signed any players. Um, but the other four teams have like renewed contracts of the best players and yeah. things like that. Th there's no so certainty so with any of our players, though. That's you, you look online, I know it's probably hearsay or whatever, but. You got the likes of Hemmings apparently has had a lot of interest from like. Well, that's two. what I mean. It doesn't surprise yeah. me because, and and the thing is, if if we've got bills to pay, and someone offers a, a fraction of what we paid for him, but any money towards Hemmings, I wouldn't surprise me if Harley takes the money because he needs it. We we got uh, we sold a, a Tete, didn't we? Yeah. To Tottenham, Tottenham a few Tottenham. weeks ago. Two hundred. Yeah, I heard I heard it was two hundred grand. No, nothing confirmed. Yeah, I've no, sort of figures. But even that is that was obviously just done to get money in, and yeah. that's what I worry could happen if. Bids come in for players, and it's like it's, it's fine selling them players if you're able to then reinvest. But if if we're not going to get taken over for a month, and in the meantime we're selling players, I, I, honestly, I I feel for if it's hardly or whoever's got the job of trying to assemble a squad because yeah, we could be in real trouble. You just got to sort of hope your recruits are like you. Oh, I think you recruit. Uh, that's that's what yeah. that's what's weird about the the hardly thing for me is like it was just games where just tactically was abysmal but I think he's obviously got an eye for a player Yeah, his signings on paper were exactly what we needed Jim, we need two centre midfields he got two well three centre midfields he went and got really yeah. you know I love Jim O'Brien I do see I'm more I prefer, I'm a Mitch Rose yeah. fan for yeah, me. I, love I just Rose. think he does everything um, I think Doyle was just I don't know what the guy's problem was but yeah O'Brien Brian was a good player he frustrates me a little bit because I think he was trying to be a bit um Steven Gerrard with some of his passing but uh, he, he was a good player and if he comes back I think you know on paper you know if if you can get the right players firing you know with Dennis and uh, Dennis and Hemmings up front that's what annoys me as well we signed those two as a strike force and I think they played together twice mm. and one game yeah. they played together he was moved out wide and that's what annoyed me about Kewell he kept playing Dennis on the left wing and I couldn't understand why Dennis was like well I want to I want to go because it just 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 annoyed me that we never re I think yeah two games it was one home game an extra away where we played them up front together and um, yeah just baffled me so yeah you've got those two Enzio if he fancies it probably not um, you know you've got his like confidence took a big hit and I think that's yeah it. you could tell he just was scared yeah. I can see yeah but he tries to step over he's getting wiped out first game of the season yeah. and his confidence will be gone again like I've, I've not seen a player that's that much of a confidence player for so long. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I think the step down could could raise his confidence oh, again. Know, yeah, no, it's it's fifty fifty. Well, and the it's thing is, like, 50 /50. I'm I'm good as well, though. It's like you were saying, he, he's, he's got it. Yeah, in. you know, he has, and that's yeah. He, there's there's a reason that play, clubs from League One were trying to sign him because obviously got the ability, but you just if you fancy it or not. And like I say, I like I say, I thought it was a very strange one for me. But on on paper, he might be all right at that level. You never know. So on paper, you've that's what I'm saying it's not like there's no one there at the minute but you know there's probably seven you know still two or still here yeah. so I think obviously we need centre backs and left back we need quite a bit but I'm saying it, you know there's still bits there so it's not the end of the world but it will be if they start leaving that's the big problem you've got to hope though as well like you know we're not signing any players you've got to hope that the mess we're in is also putting people off buying the, the players like yeah. Rose Enzio I, mean, I, I don't. I, I don't think it will because they could just say they could just get get the players for cheaper. But there's a I have a sneaking suspicion that I think it's probably a bit more optimism than anything that maybe oddly if he's still in charge, has a few people lined up. Maybe well, I think I think he, he, I'd like to think that in the back of his mind he knew we were 
probably going down. So I, in my, I'd like to hope he was looking at players, but the problem we've got is that it wouldn't surprise me if some of the players he's looking at, he, will look, he was looking at, have already gone elsewhere because there's just no one, you know, no one left to. There's no one to make those decisions. No, um, it's such a mess as well. To want to stay at the club, you've really got to have a certain feeling towards. Well, the if, club, I, if I'm, I know those those pl- we owe those players nothing because they effectively got us relegated. But right now, if I'm Kane Hemmings, I'm thinking, do I really want to be here? That's yeah, so, so I agree. Much better. You could go to a, a with all respect, like you could go to a smaller team in League Two and have a much easier time. Yeah. Like, and it, yeah, the only the only the re- the only reason I think they'd probably like to stay is a lot of them won't get a better wage, yeah. and that's that's the only thing that will probably keep them from, you know. Maybe a bit of redemption as well. Yeah, and that's the one thing that maybe thinks we might get quite a few to stay is just a wage thing. Um, and it, it, it's not a blessing because we obviously don't want players on big money, but it might be a blessing that they do, they are on good money because it means, you know, the clubs in League Two won't, won't want to touch what most of those players are on. So, yeah, um, that, that's, that's a positive. Yeah, in a way. Those though, players yeah. were paid for promotion, like they were paid a promotion side. Oh, yeah, just. yeah. Exactly, promotion, and we, and we paid money for them. And I, I, you know, until probably last time I saw us pay money was the Monto season, really. Like actually spend, go out and spend money. Yeah, um, uh, it's yeah, probably definitely. the Monto season. Like, in my lifetime, I don't. I could, you could probably name on on both hands players that we've bought for m- money. And this season, it's like oh, we spent a bit money. Oh, we spent a bit more money. So it just it, it's it's the most Notts County thing ever. To spend effectively the the m- most money we've ever spent by the month season and get relegated, yeah. it's um, it's it's just not you know, we were we were like one to two to get in the playoffs, um, and somehow we've finished second bottom. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. Isn't it? It's a nightmare. But that's uh, three weeks since our last video, yeah. with uh, Jordan and Luke, and if you'd have said we'd be in the exact same position with a stupid email that says nothing. What, three more weeks and that's the first that's none eaten in a friendly you just sort of feel like it can't get worse though you know what I mean yeah, but if, if it, like, I think in the none the, the, the eaten game you're going to have loads of trial lists but you're also going to have like you're going to have to have like the under 18s on the bench and the, then the cheek of him though to organise friendly against Ilkeston makes me like, oh my that gosh could be, that, yeah, that, that could be a bit like I don't know that's just <laughs> unbelievable if, what, if, he's, if he's gone by that date but something tells me that He's, he's, uh, to organise that friendly I think he thinks he's still going to be there in some way when I saw on Twitter earlier that he's let go I think it's Ilkeston's goalkeeper because he couldn't afford to keep him yeah. he can't afford to keep an Ilkeston keeper Appa- apparently I think he's a goalkeeper I just saw everyone saying what like, what are we doing so bad times horrific yeah. well yeah well, we'll have to see I think we're going to uh, York like York, like York, yeah, York what is it? yeah, York, yeah, yeah. I think we're going to that, aren't we? We're going what to away. Uh, is it away? York. Yeah, yeah. We're going to the home ones. Yeah, we're going to Ilkeston as well. Ilkeston, yeah. So that's a nice go to. I think. See where we're there by then. Yeah, I think there'll be a lot going to Ilkeston. It'll be interesting one. I think it'll be one or two ways. I think either a lot will go and have their say. I think some people will just be like, I don't even want to give him my money. Oh yeah, that's the thing. It's all his money, isn't it? Exactly. That. We're saying we don't even want to go to the friendlies because it's giving him money. Yeah. yeah. Well, a lot of fans feel the same. Season well, ticket for me. Look on Twitter; it's littered with people saying the same thing. They don't want to renew. I'm well, not getting a season ticket as long as. Yeah. He's well, the annoying thing is, is this is the first year obviously he's done the the price bracket for up to twenty four, which is perfect for me. And it's first year, any other year, even if we weren't going for anything, just standard League Two season, I'd actually be like, I'd have one. I might as well have one this season because I I stopped buying season tickets about three or four years ago, but. This season, I, was, I looked at the price. I thought, oh, that's brilliant!" And you know what? I cannot be bothered. Mm. Uh, yeah, the season ticket thing. You know, the what was it? Twenty one to twenty four. Yeah, twenty two to twenty five. Twenty two to twenty five. Oh, yeah. yeah. Why? Don't, why don't they just release like a student? Sad. Yeah, I think that's what I, they, like. They need to do something like that. They've got to find a way to get funds in next season. I like. I think probably students is is probably a good market. Cause it's a massive student. Oh well, yeah, yeah, huge, massive. You got two, two, two big universities. Yeah, and th- that that's the big thing is that's how you also get people in is people that come to university that probably just support Man United or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And if you start getting, you know, if they're in for the next four years, it's a really good way in. But I 
just yeah, I think it'll be very interesting when the fixtures come out to see that first game. I think that's when it'll really hit home when it comes out that we're playing Bromley on the first game of the season. Like, okay, right, yeah. this is actually happening. Yeah. Fixtures are so late, aren't they? Yeah, because they're done by um, they're not done like computer generated. They're actually written up, aren't they? Yeah, yeah it's, yeah. it's uh, and they give you near ones like on Boxing Day. Boxing Day you yeah. play the same team on Boxing Day, New Year, don't you? Do you? Yeah. So you play, and it's normally a local game, Chesterfield. Probably. So it'll be Chesterfield, Boxing Day, New Year. That'd be that'd be. Decent. Yeah, at least I, I like the idea of that. Close well, games. Boxing Day fixtures, we've n- we've never not had a good one in ages, and I, I traditionally I do l- really like Boxing Day fixtures. So if we got a local derby, yeah, that'd be that'd, decent. That'd be class, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. All right, Callum, yeah. really appreciate you talking to no us. Worries. Thank yeah, you. Hopefully, we're in a better state. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of weeks. So. Yeah, so. cheers. Thank you. No yeah, worries. Thank you.